Hi there, Green the Lamp with you mate, JJ. So uh, today we're going to keep on keeping on with our Maxitronics 10 in 1 electronic project lab. We've done the first three uh, circuits and now we're going to do uh, circuit number four. Um, <clears throat> in just a moment I'll, I'll take you over to the booth and, and we'll, we'll assemble the project. This is the, uh, this is the project board. Um, it's, uh, it uses these little wire spring, spring terminals for wiring. There's a few uh, it, uh, components on the board. It's, it's obviously the, uh, the first one, the 10 in 1 is the smallest project. Uh, lab that Maxitronics released, so we're just working through the first one. Um, I'll do the other ones uh, later. We're just working our way through from the beginning. So we're up to Project Four now. Project Four is uh, a diode radio. Now, <clears throat> I prefer doing digital stuff than analog stuff, um, and analog stuff that involves radio, I just tend to find it's fiddly. It doesn't really work particularly well. It's hard to demo. But uh, that's what we've got. So that's what we're doing. We'll put the radio together. Um, once we put it together, we'll bring it over here to the bench and put it under the equip test equipment and see how it performs. I'm not sure what we should expect to see uh, on, the, on the outputs of a radio. Um, perhaps the um, oscilloscope will be able to pick up the, 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 audio, the audio signal or something like that. So uh, um, I'm not exactly sure what to expect. I, I haven't done this before. So we're just going to be doing uh, circuit number four, diode radio. So let's pop over to the booth and put this guy together. All right, well, here we are in the booth. Uh, I'm just going to check the sound. Oh, that looks okay. All right, good. So um, this is our uh, project lab. Uh, it's still got the wires in it from the last project, so let's just pop those out. As you can see, the, uh, the wires just connect to these spring terminals here, so they're pretty easy to, uh, to get in and out. Now, can you see that? I hope that's in focus. Um, now, the battery is not going to be needed for this one, I believe, because it's uh, not powered. So I'll, I'll just uh, pop you over to the instructions. Now, this is circuit number four, the diode radio. This diode radio uses no power. Radio signals picked up by the antenna are fed into the coil and a variable capacitor that makes up the tuning circuit. When you turn the tuning knob on the capacitor, you tune the radio to different broadcast stations. The audio signals in the selected broadcast station are detected by the diode and transformer circuit, then are reproduced by the earphone. Since there are no amplifiers in the radio, you must start out with a good, strong station signal. To get a good reception, you need a good antenna and a good ground connection. Use the long wire in your kit for the antenna, connecting one bare end to the antenna terminal and spreading that wire. Connect another piece of wire between the ground terminal of your kit and a cold water pipe or the frame outside of an electrical conduit. Both wire ends must be stripped off of insulation. Move the antenna around to the position that gives you the best reception. Sometimes connecting the antenna to a window screen improves the signal picked up. All right, and uh, as you can see, actually, there's the uh, the wiring diagram, so that's pretty straightforward there. And then um, they've given us the uh, the schematic. Can you see that? Yes, you can. So um, we've got an antenna connected to the to the coil, um, and it goes through uh, uh, to the diode, and it goes through a tuning capacitor, connected to ground. It goes to the transformer, and then the transformer goes to the earphone. Is that right? Yes, I think it is. Interesting. All right, and the wiring checklist shows there's just six wires to connect. The tips say you can extend the reception range of your radios by up to 100 times by simply attaching the antenna wire to the house antenna jack and the ground wire to the ground connection on the antenna jack. You create a really giant dipole antenna and increase the sensitivity significantly. Electric shock hazard. Adult supervision is required when performing these connections. You can apply this tip on all the radio projects to increase the reception sensitivity. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see how we go. I don't know. I do actually have a ground connection here for my. Um, uh, uh, let me show you. Actually, I'll just pop you back over uh, here. And if I just pull this out, I've got this guy here, which is uh, um, uh, it's a, it's grounded with this uh, grounding cable, um, and uh, it's a it's an anti-static earthing wrist watch. So that actually goes into a, a thing, and uh, it's got a it's got a banana plug on the end of it. So. Um, the problem is, uh, well, it's complicated. Uh, anyway, this particular thing, if I turn it on, um, it can it can start to it can start to beep if the if there's no grounding being done, and we don't want a beeping thing. It's designed to actually make sure that it's actually on your wrist. Um, oh, hang on. I oh, know that's power. Sorry, I'm just fooling around in my under my bench here. You can't see, but it's just here. Um, yeah, the the ground cable. Um, it's not plugged in, it's wired in. So I, anyway, long story short, I don't have a handy ground lead uh, to hand. So maybe we'll um, maybe we'll make one or something like that. I suppose we could do that. 
All right. Anyway, let's put this circuit together, um, and uh, and we'll see how we go. And if we uh, need the ground ground uh, cable, we can we can do that that part later on. So uh, let's just put in our six wires, and that's not going to be very difficult or take very long. So let me just find those instructions over here. All right. So we've got a wire um, two to three. So we've got two to three. Uh, one on the top, two to three. All right. So we're just connecting the uh, antenna coils together. This is connecting the shorter one to the longer one. And then we'll connect uh, three to six. Three to six. That looks like that'll make it over there. Two to three. Three to six. So that's connecting uh, to the, um, the tuning. I'm gonna use a longer wire. That white one's not quite long enough. So the next size up is red. Let's use a red wire. We got uh, two to six. It's pretty good. Now, then we've got uh, four to eight. Four to eight. We use a red wire for that as well. This is eight. So this is just wiring in our germanium diode four, over to the uh, to the antenna. And then we've got five to seven. So that's just the other um, connection between the antenna and the tuning capacitor. Now, I did actually do some measurements of that tuning capacitor, but I forget. We might have a look at that as well when we're over on the bench later on. So then we've got to do 6 to 15. So looks like we'll need a fairly long cable for that. So let's use a blue. What was it again? 6 to 15. So that's just wiring in the transformer, which has something to do with the output circuitry. I don't know actually how it works. So I saw the schematic, and it left me uh, quite confused, frankly. Uh, and 9 to 13. Nine. Oh, that's the other side of the diode there. All right, so this is the germanium diode over to the transformer. And then it seems to me, yeah, the earphone just gets connected to either side of the... Uh, I, I've got an earphone here, by the way. This is one I've used earlier. Uh, these are the little piezoelectric things. Uh, so... It says that we don't need batteries, so presumably when we plug this thing in, we'll just start getting sound out of the speakers or out of this earphone here. There's no uh, switch involved, so it, whoop, so it's just going to start being on like straight away. All right. I hear absolutely nothing. Hang on, lost a wire. All right, well, I don't hear a thing. Let's check the wiring. Well, what about one? There's nothing connected to one. Oh, the antenna. Okay, so the antenna is just a long piece of wire. This is a long piece of wire. <clears throat> Maybe if we, uh, if we put the antenna in, we'll get some sort of a signal. What about if we just use this guy? Nothing. Well, I can tell you that without a ground and without an antenna, we're not getting anything out of this circuit. I'm just unwiring this uh, this long green thing. Well, I have to say, I, I think over here somewhere, I've got, there's the small aerial. And I thought I had a roof aerial. Small aerial and this guy is the big aerial. So I've got a big aerial and I've got a small aerial. Do you see those? Yeah. So um, perhaps instead of unwi unwiring all of this green um, cable, we'll just use our aerial. Now I don't know, I don't know uh, much about how aerials work. Anyway, we've got this one here. It's labeled big aerial. Can you see that? That's the big aerial. Uh, let's try putting him on here. Yeah, I definitely don't hear anything. I wonder if I could... Uh, what I really need is a banana plug to alligator. But uh, any old banana plug would do, wouldn't it? And I'll just use a uh, 
alligator clip as well. So here we've got a um, we've got a green banana cable. I'll put that in there, and then the ground point is um, okay. The ground point is point six, point six, which is here. Yeah, okay. Okay, I can hear, I can hear something. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's keep uh, moving ahead. What we'll do is just get a, a banana, uh, sorry, an alligator lead. So, I, I've got an alligator lead here. Uh, this is our earth connection. Um, and let's just wire him on there. So, we've got... Um, I'm just having some trouble with this alligator clip. Let's get him on there. All right. Well, it's not exactly pretty, but we've got our, our earth lead connected um, and we've got our aerial connected. If I put the earphone in, nothing. Yeah. Now, I guess the, the other thing we could try is um is getting a better even the house aerial it said it could use the house aerial just testing all of the connections here just to make sure they're not loose <sighs> yeah that's not working at all what am i going to do let me grab the uh the house aerial that'll be at the back here yeah, all right. <sighs> I don't think I want to uh I don't think I want to do that. What we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to call this circuit done. <coughs> we'll take it over to the bench and we'll have a look at it. We'll see if there's any anything at all coming out of the um out of out of, out of the uh um the terminals that are connected to the headphone. We'll have a look at it with the scope. Um We'll have a look at it with the thermal cam. I don't expect to see anything. This is unpowered, so it won't be doing enough to create heat. Um, I can't imagine. So, um, okay, I'm going to wrap up this part of the video, and I'll see you over in the bench in a minute. All right, well, here we are on the bench. Uh, this is our circuit. It's the diode radio, which we just put together in the booth. Now, uh, I'm, I'm not getting any interesting signals out of this thing, so let's uh, just go over the wiring again. Um, this is our... Um, uh, our earth lead. It's just an alligator clip to the point on the circuit where we want it connected. Runs through here and then over to the the earthing system. Um, if I turn that on, it, that beeping is telling me that there's no earth being done. But I think when I put the antenna on, that will cease to be a problem. So I'll just throw that switch again. And that's good. It tells me that there's a good earth connection. So uh, that's better than nothing, I guess, isn't that? Now here's the earphone. I can't hear anything out of the earphone at all, not a peep. And adjusting the um, the tuning capacitor makes almost no difference. I, I really can't hear anything at all. No, no static, no nothing. When I move the terminals, no noise. So I'm, I'm at a loss, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what kind of a connection we've got here. Okay. Um, well, let's put this thing under the scope. Uh, I'm not expecting to see anything. I think this is going to be a pretty disappointing experiment. <laughs> but uh, we should at least take a look, huh? So I'm just going to um, <coughs> hook up a, a probe for channel one on the scope. Now, um, this is the, the probe here. Um, you can see that there. Now, uh, you'll want to see... Uh, the HDMI channel one. Okay, and I just need to put on uh, utility IO HDMI output on. There we go. And if I just pop you over there, that's our HDMI signal at the up the top there. You see that there. So uh, obviously there's nothing to see. Um, so let's uh, connect somewhere. Let's connect between uh, ground. We'll put the ground on the ground. And we'll put the probe on the other side. There we go. 
Now you can see um, that it's basically just showing nothing at all on that scope. Um, I don't know if I can zoom in. Uh, vertical. Yeah. And uh, when I adjust this tuning capacitor, I didn't see really any appreciable effect on that output, do you? It just seems to be basically noise. Yeah, how disappointing. I kind of knew this was going to happen. I've never had any luck with these simple radios. <clears throat> so I don't know if we really should expect more out of this than we got. Um, I guess for the sake of, of it, I'll, I'll throw it under the thermal cam, although honestly, I'm not sure that's particularly uh, time well spent. Oh, dear me. I'm not sure where this goes. Now, <sighs> I'm just booting up the uh, the thermal imager. It actually takes quite a while to connect, doesn't it? <sighs> All right. Yeah, there's not nothing of interest to see. Anyway, we'll we'll put it on and we'll see what what we can see, if anything. Uh, just give me a second and I'll be back. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting there. So uh, as you can see, we've got the thermal cam operational. Where's my hand? There's my hand. Uh, we can see the circuit here. Um, and what's that big red? I don't know what that big red is there. What's that? It must be my foot or something. I don't know what that hot point is. What's that? It must be a reflection of, of the, uh, it must be a reflection of the, uh, windowed light. Let's see what happens if I turn the room lights on. Nope. What's that hot point? There's a hot point right here. Is that, that wire is not hot. That, that, that wouldn't be likely. I just don't know. Why is it hot there? I must have had my coffee there. That must be what that is. That's my coffee from earlier. It's been sitting there. Isn't that funny? Wow. So, uh, okay, well, that's a learning point for us. This circuit might have been useless, but at least I know. Don't leave my coffee on the bench because it'll heat up the, uh, the bench. And then when I take the coffee away, we won't get a good read on our circuit because the heat on the bench will be coming through. Fascinating. All right. Well, um, there does seem to be a little bit of heat on this guy, doesn't there? Just a little bit. Oh, it must be reflections, reflecting heat um, off the off the metal. Fascinating. Well, I'll give it one last listen, and we'll have one last look at the scope. I don't know that there's any point probing other parts of the circuit. There's nothing to see there. There's nothing to see there. Yeah, there's just nothing to see. How disappointing. Well, that's our um, that's our radio circuit all done. So uh, yeah, I'm going to tie this one off, and you know what? I'm just going to work on the next video uh, right now. Um, I'll queue them up. They should come out every day. So today's video was a little bit boring. I'm sorry about that. Um, but uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow, and uh, very soon we'll be through our 10 in one, which is uh, you know all pretty basic stuff, and we'll be able to move on to the 20 in one. Uh, so looking forward to that. Just got to get, get through the, 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 the projects and, uh, and continue the learning. I think today's learning was don't put the, uh, the coffee cup on the thermal can so, uh, <clears throat> on, on the bench because we, we don't want it to interfere with the, with the thermal can. So uh, that's enough of this video. If you're interested in the next video or the one after it or the one after it, don't forget to hit subscribe uh, and I'll see you in the next video.